Continuing with chapter 8, we'll do part 3. Physical medicine and rehabilitation. A physiatrist is a specialist in physical medicine and rehab. I worked for 10 years in a rehabilitation hospital. And the physicians who worked primarily with our patients were physiatrists. Don't confuse that term with the term psychiatrist because they look and sound very similar. Physiatrists primarily work with therapy, physical, occupational, and speech to accomplish whatever treatment goals the patient has. The physiatrist use e and codes for their professional service billing when they're seeing the patient, but there are codes in this section of the medicine chapter that cover physical therapy services, testing and measurement codes to document the use of prosthetics and physical performance testing. Physical medicine and rehab also includes active wound care management. We had many patients that were there for wound care when I was at the rehab hospital. So this subsection also includes wound care. Actual debridement is a surgical procedure that's covered in the surgery chapter. So you have to be sure when you're reading these code descriptions that you are differentiating between debridement. Debridement is a term used in these code descriptions, so it's a little bit confusing but it's the extent to which you're doing it. Also the codes in this section talk about selective and non-selective. As far as your procedure, are you selecting very specific tissue that you're targeting for removal or are you just um, cleaning up an area so you're not zeroing in on specific pieces of tissue but just really cleaning up an area and that would be considered non-selective. 30 minutes of water aerobic exercises with a therapist for the treatment of arthritis. Your CPT code would be 97113 times 2, and that is because when you look up this code, 97113, it's described as each 15 minutes. So if your patient was seen for 30 minutes, you've got to have that code twice to account for the 30 minutes. You notice also when you're looking up therapy, your main term is going to be physical medicine slash therapy slash occupational therapy. Then your aquatic, in this scenario, your aquatic therapy would be in the next subterm with exercises. Physician orders a reevaluation of a knee injury following a course of athletic training. This is not, I don't think, written very well. What they're actually asking you to do is code the reevaluation of a plan of care. Because when someone's been given athletic training as a treatment, that is coming under a plan of care. So the physician is making sure that the plan of care or the course of treatment that he has told the physical therapist or the athletic trainer to do, is that working? So this is a reevaluation of the physician's plan of care to make sure the correct plan of care has been given for the athletic training following a knee injury. So hopefully that clarifies that. It's just not written very well. And there is your answer, 97172. You see that your main term is again physical medicine slash therapy slash occupational therapy. Athletic training would be your next subterm and then re-evaluation. It is important that you notice that re-evaluation term because there are also evaluation terms. So be sure you're selecting the right one. Here's an example not in the textbook that is about the active wound care management. Remember that you will see a question like this, or this one or similar to it, in the exam. Provider note the patient was seen in the wound clinic. Debridement of an open wound, 40 square centimeters, was accomplished with a high pressure water jet with suction. Healing noted with significant fill in around the edges of the wound. Instructions were given to the patient for dressing changes and he will be seen in the clinic next week for further assessment. And then I've just told you in my note there that this is a selective process. Very specific tissue is being removed with this high pressure water jet with suction. The index pathway is the wound as your main term. Your main term is wound, subterms care, debridement, and selective to be sure you're capturing the correct code. When we read these codes, 97597 is debridement using the high pressure water jet with or without suction, but is for the first 20 square centimeters. This patient had a 40 square centimeter wound, so we would have to add another code, 97598, each additional 20 square centimeters, 
or part thereof. So that's how we would code this. If this patient had had a 30 square centimeter wound, we would also need both codes because 97598 says each additional 20 square centimeters or part thereof. It's important that that is there. It's not, not all the codes give us that or part thereof. But I like it when it tells us very specifically that we can use that code. There's another example not in the textbook about orthotic management and prosthetic management. Prosthetic training, lower extremity, 60 minutes. What is the correct code? We go back to our familiar physical medicine slash therapy slash occupational therapy as our main terms. Prosthetic training is our subterm 97761. When we look up that code description, it tells us it is each 15 minutes. So we know we have to use that code four times to account for 60 minutes. If you don't know, orthotics are things that we put in our shoes, for example, that help align our body correctly. A prosthetic is when you are replacing an entire joint, like um, an arm prosthesis or a leg prosthesis. A prosthesis on the leg can be either below the knee or above the knee. But we do a lot of prosthetic management in rehabilitation hospitals, primarily because people are coming there for rehab following an amputation of a limb. Totally different section, qualifying circumstances for anesthesia. There are four CPT codes that can be used to report qualifying circumstances or additional information that is used for patients that are undergoing anesthesia that have a greater risk of complication. The things that they talk about are extreme age, and that could be the very old or the very young, total body hypothermia, controlled hypotension, or possible emergencies. You're going to be reporting qualifying circumstances for anesthesia along with the code for the anesthesia service. Here's an example within this section, not in the textbook. You will see this on an exam or one very close to it. This is a physician note. The patient arrived at the ambulatory care center in respiratory distress with a severe anemic condition. He is 90 years old. However, he is an avid walker and in pretty good shape. From our examination and the results of tests, he appears to have a GI bleed and he wishes to have it repaired. The high probability of complications was discussed at length with the patient and his son. The patient is a sound mind and desires to proceed with the surgery. What CPT code would be used to describe the qualifying circumstances for anesthesia for this patient, this 90-year-old patient? And the answer would be 99100. What I think is interesting here is in your index pathway, I had to look for this code because it doesn't fall. I get why they did it the way they did, because you've got three or four different things that could come in this section. But you just have to remember that anesthesia is your main term and special circumstances would be your subterm. Then you would choose the extreme age. I guess it helps if you remember that this section is called qualifying circumstances and your subterm in the index is also includes the word circumstances. Maybe that would help. Moderate or conscious sedation. There are two slides here that talk about this. If you've had a colonoscopy, you may have had this type of sedation where you are kind of out of it, but you can respond to the physician telling you to do different things. The difference is when a patient has this type of sedation, you are not on the ventilator. You remain, um, your airway is still clear. You're able to breathe on your own spontaneously. But it does require the presence of an independent trained observer to assist the physician in monitoring the level of consciousness and the patient's physiological status. Codes represent performance and documentation of pre-sedation and post-sedation evaluations, the administration of the sedation, and the monitoring of cardiorespiratory functions. So even though you're not on the ventilator, your respiration status is being carefully monitored. If the physician who performs the sedation also performs the procedure supported by the sedation, the physician will supervise and direct an independent trained observer who will assist in taking care of the patient. So if your physician is doing both the sedation and the procedure, there has to be another person there to observe what's going on with the patient. There are also codes for when you have one physician doing the procedure and one physician doing the sedation. 
two different physicians. Those are different codes. The codes are also differentiated by time, how long this takes. Here's an example of a moderate sedation question, not in the textbook. You will see it on the exam or something very similar to it. A seven-year-old patient is seen for a minor routine therapeutic service that requires the administration of moderate sedation for 30 minutes performed by a physician other than the physician performing the therapeutic service. So in this case, there are two physicians. We don't need that trained observer because we've got two physicians. And there, you would look under sedation as your main term, moderate, and then there's your range of codes. And when we read through them, 99156 is for moderate sedation services provided by a physician other than the physician performing the service. Initial 15 minutes, and then there is a, an age factor. This particular code is for age five years and older. So there's your initial 15 minutes. We know that this person had moderate sedation for 30 minutes. So we go back to our codes, and code 99157 is for each additional 15 minutes. So you would have to include both of those codes as your answer for the moderate sedation. Then there's a very broad section called Other Services and Procedures. It really just covers so many different things, but it is something you just need to be aware of what's in there. For example, hi hyperbaric oxygen therapy. I have worked in hospitals where um, that was used for someone who was in a diving accident and they've got now, I believe it's nitrogen bubbles in their blood, so they have to go into this hyperbaric chamber that takes them back to that level, the depth that they were in in the water, and slowly brings them back to the pressure that we have in our atmosphere, and then those bubbles dissolve. So it's a very specific therapy. Epicac is when there's a drug that's given mostly in the emergency department for a baby that's eaten something he shouldn't have eaten, or a young child. And they will give them that and watch them until they vomited and vomited and vomited to be sure that they've gotten all of that toxic substance out of their blood. Sometimes it's medications, sometimes it's poison mushrooms or other plants that are poisonous to the child. Another thing that's used are anal genital examination, and this is when you've got a child you suspect has been sexually abused, and this examination is done for court proceedings, and it is magnified, meaning any uh, minute tears in the body surface, either um, around the anus or the vet vagina, they're going to be looking for small tears that would indicate some kind of trauma. It's a very specific code. And then phlebotomy, when you're just drawing blood for a test, that also falls in this section. Home health procedures and services. These codes are used by non-physician healthcare professionals to report services provided in a patient's residence. And this would include the patient's home, but it also includes assisted living, group homes, non-traditional private homes, custodial care, or school. So you really got just about all settings there. A physician is not using these home health procedure codes. A physician is using home visit codes that are in the E&M chapter and utilizing CPT codes other than this group of codes for any procedure that they are providing to a patient living in a residence. So again, depending on who you're coding for, you would select different codes. Here's an example, home visit by a non-physician healthcare professional to provide mechanical ventilation care to a patient. This is an example of a question not in the textbook, but you may very well see it on the exam or something similar to it. Home services would be your main term in the index, mechanical ventilation, your subterm, 99504. There are also home infusion procedures. These two codes, 99601 and 99602, are used for home visits by a non-physician professional and a code for all the necessary solutions required to deliver a therapeutic service in one visit. What is not included in this, these two codes are the drugs. Medication therapy management services are when you have face-to-face -face medication therapy management services by a pharmacist. 
This is based on a new versus established patient and the amount of time it has spent. And the guidelines specify that MTMS, Medication Therapy Management Services, documentation has to include a review of pertinent patient history, a medication profile, recommendations for improving health outcomes, and treatment compliance. All those things have to be included in the pharmacist documentation. If you have any questions about Chapter 8, Part 3, please post them in the discussion board and I will attempt to answer them. And I hope you have a good day.